Lovely to be here in New York. My, I have to say it's my favorite city in the world. Uh, yeah, uh, Barcelona, very close second, but hey. Um, so I always love it here. And uh, really glad to be invited uh, to speak to you today, I guess, about when I said, someone, someone asked me before, it's like, what are you going to speak about? I said, I'm going to talk about data. And they instantly fell into a coma. I was like, oh, <laughs> really? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. But I, I also, you know, have no friends, so I can't really judge things. Um, so yeah, but data, I use a lot of, I use data in a lot of my work. Um, and uh, I'm interested in how you extrapolate stories from that data. And I think the job of, of graphic design is trying to tell stories, the job of web design, graphic design, interaction design. You're trying to engage people in an emotive way. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the theme, I think, of this, uh, of this talk. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's crack on. Um, so I, I really believe that, you know, everything is data, everything around us. To me, data is kind of like um, snow falling. I hate snow as well, which is a weird analogy for me. I hate snow, hate being cold. But I once did a lecture tour in Alaska. Worst place to go if you hate snow and being cold. But anyway, um, so data is kind of like snow. And it falls around us constantly, uh, waiting for the NSA to pick it up. And, you know, well, it falls around us, and we can pick it up and shape it into things. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, pieces of print work I made with, with data, um, physical things. Uh, we're going to ask ourselves our qu the question, what if you could trip over data? Uh, you know, you bump into data. What does that mean? Um, and yeah, so, so, you know, I, I kind of see that every, everything is kind of this, this data thing. So uh, I, I realized the other day, I'm working, I was, last few weeks I've been working in London uh, for like four days a week. And then I travel back 300 miles to where I live on the northwest coast of England. And um, I love pencils. I'm a pencil geek. Um, we can talk about the Eberhard and Favor Blackwing 602. Anyone in the audience later on? Fabulous. Um, so... And, so, and, and I have the, the best pencil sharpener in the world. Is the one, it's, it's made by a company, the unfortunately named Cum. Um, and yeah, K-U-M. And uh, they make this pencil sharpener. It's the best pencil sharpener in the world. There is no arguments. Do not do internal debate. This is the truth. Um, this is the Cum long point. Um, it's great because it's, you know, it's got two things. So that's when you start your penciling, sharpening. And that's where you finish it off to get it really sharp. You could kill someone with the point it makes. And so, but the great thing is it collects all the stuff. So, you know, when I'm away, working away, uh, so when I'm working in London, uh, I'm sharpening pencil. I don't need a, a little bin because it's all built in here. It's cool, right? So, well then, you know, I go home for the weekend and then I have to empty my pencil sharpener. This is really dull, isn't it? And uh, so, and then I realized that, hang on a minute, hang on. So as I was about to put this stuff in the bin, I realized that what was contained in here was actually remnants or witness to my work on this project I'm working on at the minute. Um, these shavings weren't just shavings. It was kind of data collected as a side effect of, you know, working. And so I, I you know, got, as you do, rather than put it in the bin, I decided to make a timeline of it. Uh, so this is my time on, the, on the, the project so far in pencil shavings that was going to go in a bin, but it's kind of, it is data, you know, it's this object, it's a side effect of, of the process. And I love that. And so I'm going to talk about those kind of things. That, and when you actually switch that on in your brain, that everything is data, you start looking at the world in a slightly different way. Um, so what, is, you know, what, what does data look like? Now, I'm a visual person. Um, I'm not an intellectual. I'm not going to get all data scientist on you. Uh, those people are amazing. That's not me. I like, um, you know, I like pretty things. Can't help it. There you go. Um, I'm kind of the Kim Kardashian of data, I guess. Um, so, and, you know, so to me, when I think of data, 
I like, I like, you know, I come from a slightly graphic design background. My heroes are a great graphic designer, Sol Bass, um, Morris Binder. So people like Morris Binder, who did the opening titles for pretty much all the James Bond titles uh, for a long time. Um, so I, to me, data is, is kind of like, like this. Let's have a look. You'll see data in a minute. Very exciting. Get ready. Data, look at it. Amazing. It's beautiful. Sexy and exciting. It's like someone's going to die, you know, look. Or maybe they won't. You know. I love this. They go, data. Oh my God, I'm going to work with data. I'm going to make stuff like this. Morris Binder, genius. Um, communicating, you know, the, the whole feeling of Dr. No, and it was all about new technology as well within the. Um, there was an urgency to it. Graphic, amazing motion graphic design. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and then you go, oh, data, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Shit, what happened? You know, it's like, <laughs> this is the reality, right? So you go, oh, wow, well, you know, I wanted, like, the sexiness, and then I got this. Thanks for that. So this is a, so there's a, co there's a correlation here. So this is a, the most exciting chart you'll bloody see today. Uh, it's a comma separated value, you know, as you, you can do these things, you know, you can get all this data, you can export this data from Excel. Um, and what you're looking at here is this is the number of kills by James Bond in official James Bond movies, right? So, and you probably looked at that and go, I knew that, Brent. It was exciting, obviously. Um, but, and you can get this data. So rather than me sit there and count how many people James Bond has killed watching every James Bond movie, Luckily, because the internet is full of weirdos, someone's already done that, right? Which is great. This is why the internet's brilliant. It's full of weird people um, who, who like lots of different things. That's why the world's amazing. So the Guardian have this amazing website um, called the Guardian Data Store, and they push out just thousands of data sets per year on everything from like social economics, politics, world health, and popular culture, so like James Bond. So they push this thing out there, the CSV file that like you've seen, um, you know, free. And they said, you know, go away and, and they didn't just say to me, go away. They said, no, take this stuff and, and make, make something with it and we'd we'll, we'll love to see what you make with it. So because I'm, you know, I like title sequences, I grew up with title sequences, um, and I was a big Morris Binder fan. I looked at those visuals and I thought, well, maybe there's a way to combine the two um, and tell a story with it. So I did this graphic, um, which is uh, the number of kills by James Bond in the official movies. Red circles represent 10 kills, and the bluish green, should we call them turquoise for the sake of argument, um, they, they represent one kill. And it's, it's kind of a homage, hopefully, to uh, that title sequence that you've, you've just seen. Um, I say homage, basically stolen. Um, so I put this out there on the internet, and uh, it kind of went nuts. Um, that's what's great about the internet and the, and the web, is you can push this stuff out there. And I think the theme that's going to run through all this is really you don't know who is going to see this stuff. And it can lead to work. It can lead to PR. Um, you know, we t talk about value. There's value in obviously monetary value, but there's also value in seeing people seeing your work. You never know where these things are going to lead. So, I did this thing for fun, um, and I put it out on the internet, and uh, it went a bit nuts, because uh, people suddenly found there was like this this anomaly in there, this story in there. So, you, here's some close-ups: Thunderball, Goldfinger. You only lived twice, he killed uh, 21, 21 people in that. Uh, but then, um, you know, you, you go through it, and then you go, the man with the golden gun, he only killed one person by his own hand in that movie, right? And everyone went, I never, I never knew that. I've watched that film. Is, is that right? And I was like, hey, apparently some weirdo geek, he says it's right. So I'm not arguing with him. By the way, if that guy's in the audience, apologies, you are amazing. But um, so it's going to happen one day. Um, so, only one person died in Man with the Golden Gun. 
And then you go, what the shit happened in GoldenEye? Is it like 47 people died? He killed 47 people. It's like, he was having a good day, this day, you know, and then he really woke up in a bad mood, right? Now, the thing is, and that was a story out of this graphic, that's what people talked about. It caused debates, it caused conversation. That's what graphic design should do. That's what design should do. Um, and of course, it's all in here. No one is ever going to talk about this shit because it looks, it's boring, right? But we apply design to this. The story is exactly the same. The content is exactly the same. The data is exactly the same. But we apply some graphic design thinking. We, we apply some aesthetic. We get the heart racing. And then people talk about it. That's what, to me, design is. Um, you know, allowing people to go, well, oh, there's a story behind this thing. By the way, that was all done. And you could have easily have done that graphic in Photoshop or Illustrator or Sketch or whatever. Um, that was all done in processing. So, you know, I'm a programmer, really. Uh, and so that was, and because I use programming a lot, I can change the visuals very, very easily with like a touch of a button, um, which is great for clients. You go, yeah, that's 10,000 pounds. Press enter, make, you know. <laughs> Fantastic, next. Uh, if there's any potential clients in the room, that is a complete lie. Um, so I love, I love finding patterns um, in things. Uh, I hated maths at school. Uh, I'd really, really boring. Um, yeah, and we call it maths in England because that's how you say it. <laughs> right? So, um, so I, I love maths. And I, I, well, I hated maths at school. I love it now. Um, because back then, no one showed me the context of the beauty of mathematics. Um, we just learned logarithm tables, and no one told us why we were learning them. We just did. Um, and I hate that. Um, but hopefully, children these days are being taught maybe some mathematics in much better ways. Um, but I love patterns in nature. And you see this stuff all around, and uh, you can observe these things and then work out if you're a, you know, a bit of a programmer, you can work out these things or you can find these algorithms out on the internet. Um, so there's things like this I really love. Um, this is called a Vogel spiral. So a Vogel spiral is the same, you probably recognize it, it's the same mathematics that's in the head of a sunflower, okay? Which blows my mind. If you think about it, why aren't sunflowers just, why, why aren't flowers generally chaotic? Well, there's a system there and it's just a flower. Right? So, and there's nothing I have ever made that's as beautiful as anything that is in na nature ever. And that's just how it is. Um, so I'm constantly in awe of this stuff. Quite ironic for me, because I hate the outdoors. Um, but nature is amazing. Um, so head of a sunflower, and I've had this thing for a long time, this, this, uh, this algorithm that I could use in various ways. Um, and this was used in an interface. This was just a prototype. But there's like 250 images on there. And it's kind of a fun way to explore. Uh, it's serendipitous. It's not a great way to, if you're searching for images, a specific image is not really made for that. But there are cases where you, you might want to serendipitously bump into data. And that's OK, because it's fun. Uh, this was made in Flash. Boo. Right, oh, uh, yeah. No, flash, flash, I'm sorry. It was awesome. Um, I don't like to use the word awesome because I'm English, but I have my flash socks on. Thank you. Because I, so, you know, I, I, you know, I still love that thing. Um, don't use it anymore, but it was kind of cool and um, allowed you to do, you know, layouts like this. You know, we just had a great talk by Jen about layouts. Um, we could do layouts like this. I know you can do this in JavaScript if you're a plumber. Right, so, um, so, so that kind of thing, you know, yeah, and, and the idea for me is I make these things uh, that do kind of one thing well, um, and they don't do anything else. And I, I always encourage people to make these little experiments and kind of put them in a cupboard, um, not physically, literally, uh, but even mentally, or you put them in a space on your hard drive or in the cloud, whatever that is, um, and you store them away hoping that one day you might be able to use that on a piece of work, whether it's for yourself or a client, 
Um, so when a client comes to you, you think, you know what, I think I've got an idea where I can apply this thing that I made, and I had no idea why, why I made it, it was just kind of fun, um, and we can apply that and transpose it onto this work, and that will put food on my table, which is good. So that thing happened for me. Um, there's a company in uh, Europe called EE, and they're a telecoms company, a mobile phone company. And they, they, they called me uh, through an ad agency and said, uh, we want you to come down and we want you to uh, work on this piece of work. And we were launching 4G services in, in the UK. And over the first three, three days of 4G, we want you to capture all these tweets on all the social media from 11 different cities and we then want you to make something beautiful with it. And uh, I went to London and they told me this in the meeting. And I was like, this is amazing. Uh, University College London, were, I didn't even have to capture the tweets. University College London were capturing all this stuff. University College London, the data spatial analysis department, and they are you know, real proper scientists, really clever guys and girls. And you know, it's pretty, just amazing. Um, so it's a real privilege to work with them, some proper scientists. Uh, and then I was going to Kardashian it up. Um, so, you know, and you, you have these meetings, and you have no idea what you're going to make. I told them to the face, this is, you know, what are you going to do? I said, I haven't a clue. I said, you know, give me your stuff and I'll play with it. Um, and the client said to me, I'll never forget it, you know, I've worked in this industry almost 20 years, and I've wait, and there was one, I, I think I've waited all my life, all my working life, uh, to actually have a client say to me, we don't care what it looks like, we'll just accept what you do. <laughs> I was like, thank you, there is a God. You know, so, as you know, as, and, and that's, what, that's the difference. When you're an artist, you can do that. You can just send them back a black JPEG and go, there it is, there's my, there's my genius. Don't you get it? And they go, you are, you are correct, Brendan. This is amazing. Um, yeah, that's 50,000 pounds. So, so anyway, you know, the reality is you know, obviously a lot different, and they do make changes. But, um, so I started to play around with this, with this stuff, you know, I thought, hmm, you know, all these, you know, we're going to have thousands of tweets, um, and UCL gave me, I think they gave me a file with like, a thousand, it was a CSV file again, and they gave me like, and there was a thousand, one thousand tweets in it or something, like a really small amount. And so I started to play with the idea of layout and pattern, um, and the, you know, the main criteria from the client was, they wanted it to be beautiful. They were going to be printed out huge, and then we were going to present them to like 11 cities around the country. Uh, so it wasn't an online thing, uh, but obviously it was using the web in, in, a, in a different way. Um, so I started to play around with these algorithms, um, different shapes and patterns. There's, notice there's no text, nothing, you know, there's nothing like that at this moment. It's okay, we're just playing around, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, and you know, this one, I have no idea what this is, but uh, it kind of, it says the future and networks, and it's like, great. And they were like, let's have lots of lines. You know, that's what networks is, and digital. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so, you know, so I was doing all this, and the idea was that they would, um, they would then send me, come the three days, they would collect all this data from 11 cities, they would collect all these tweets, and, uh, and then they would send me the file for each city, big CSV file, and I, I would like feed it into my system, because I'm into making systems. Um, I feed it into my system that I would have already, that I'd been working on for months, and then I, it would spit these, you know, the images out. So on the, uh, so they did Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On the Monday, they sent me the file, said, oh, the files are ready to download. And I said, great. And uh, I, he said, download them here. So it connected to an Amazon server, and it, it downloaded the file, and it, it was just text, and it took, I'm on, I'm on a fast connection at home, and it was like, it hardly moved, this progress bar, and I'm thinking, shit, this is, uh, this is a big file. So I, I then, you know, un unzipped it all, and I got all these CSV files for each city, and I put it into my system, and it just went, I really don't think so. Um, and it just, you know, it just crashed, because it, London, so I, I, I was doing the demo, I was, I was working on my engine, with a thousand tweets. When they sent me the London file, there were six million tweets in that one file. 
And, my, and I tried to read them all in in one go. And the computer went, there's not even, you know, we can, we, let's contact IBM and get Deep Blue on this thing, you know? It's like to make some art, you know? So, and they're like ringing me up. And so the agency are now ringing me up going, how's it going? I said, oh, man, if you could see this, I, you know, it's making me cry. I am, you know... I am crying right now, and literally was, because, you know, I, nothing was working, and I had to get this, you know, and they've got deadlines with ad people and stuff. And, and something like that, you know, because I'd never done anything with that amount of data before, and then, you know, and, and people deal with billions of things rather than millions, so it wasn't even that big, really. Um, so what you have to do, you know, you, know, you can't go back and say, I'm, uh, I can't do this, sorry. Um, so you, you, you dig deep and uh, you read a lot of books and uh, do a lot of Googling. Uh, and when you're working on your own, you can't turn to someone cleverer than you and go, can you fix this? You know, that's what Stack Overflow is, I guess. Um, so, so eventually I realized that, well, hang on. Instead of me trying to read it all in in one go, what if we read the CSV file in line by line? Uh, I was using a piece of software called Processing. Um, I'm sure some of you know it. It's amazing. Uh, Processing.org, where you can download it for free. Um, and so I, once I read that in line by line, it took longer to do. But eventually, you know, I could have like 10 billion tweets. It wouldn't matter. So eventually, it worked. And um, this was the London image. Uh, which is obviously not made for screen. These things are like 40, you know, 40 inches uh, wide um, and the various print uh, techniques used. So this is London. And there's a key at the bottom. And each point, so you can see the sunflower head at work here. So there's a possible 4,320 points, which is the number of minutes in three days. So um, each color represented a subject that the PR company sort of uh, told me to look for within the data. Um, and you can see the black uh, circle between the last bit and the, the middle bit. That's obviously when people are asleep because they're not tweeting as much. Um, well, you can see that there's this huge explosion of, of white. Um, on the Saturday, the middle day, Hurricane Sandy hit the eastern seaboard. And even though this is London, this is everyone on Twitter uh, talking about New York. And you can see in the middle, everyone's talking about whatever. And then we all coalesce around the subject, usually you know, a world event. Um, and you can see that everyone's talking about it. And of course, the amazing thing about and we all know this. This is a visual representation of this idea that we all coalesce about it, and we're all dead empathetic. Next day, couldn't give a shit, right? <laughs> We've all forgot. You're like, what was that thing? Yeah, you know, what? New York, New York. Hey, here's my cat on a skateboard. You know, <laughs> such is the nature of how we live our lives now, right? Hey, I've done my empathetic tweet. Wonderful. Right, let's move on. So, but I'm a cynical English guy, but what you can do. So, um, so here's a close-up. So each one of these rings is a different subject. And, uh, yeah, and the lines connect to things. Um, so this is London, Southampton, and Manchester. So Manchester United football team um, were playing. And you can see the red circles are when they scored a goal, because uh, they all got on Twitter. Uh, so the kind of visual fingerprints of a moment in time, using all this data in a very, very visual way. I wouldn't say this is data inf information. Um, this is more kind of, my job was to make something beautiful that people would talk about. And whether it's beautiful is not for me to say, but for other people to judge, I guess. But um, I think I might have a close-up here. So the red on the London one, there was a big red circle. This uh, red represents Obama in this, in this graphic. So you can actually see when Obama visits New York during that uh, Hurricane Sandy episode. Um, let me just spin back. So you can actually see it top left there. And um, the aqua, I think, is uh, Skyfall coming out, James Bond movie. <laughs> it's a James Bond theme throughout this. I don't know why. Um, so that's, you know, print. 
And you see a lot of um, data information graphics, you know, that are print-based. Uh, these days, I'm kind of interested in um, things you can touch, hardware. Should we say the Internet of Things thing? Let's get that out there. Let's do that. Um, so, and I, I've been playing with connected objects for a long time. And I like to do silly things like this. So um, we might need to crank the volume up because it's got some like, I'm kind of a big David Lynch fan, so the volume, this sounds a bit like a David Lynch movie. Um, but yeah, so you can see what this one does. So it's breathing lights. But the speed of the breathing communicates how bad the air quality is in Beijing. So if, they, if the breathing of the lights is, more, is quicker, uh, then um, it's worse air quality. And when, and when it's you know, slower and, and more considered, then the air quality is, is a lot better. Um, so this is trying to create something where you can empathize with the data. Uh, and if you try and emulate that breathing, you, you, and when it's going really fast, you can like go, you actually go, Jesus, people live there? You know, and, and of course, it's all, it's all wrapped up in um, the actual globe is a Chinese, you know, made, thing made in China that vends things, vends consumer products. And now this thing inside it is trying to communicate the bad air quality within in Beijing. You know, and so you push that stuff out there. And then silly things like this. I like to make uh, an, another connected thing. Um, We'll have a look. So, it's a machine that tells me the weather. Uh, I could just look outside. <laughs> Two weeks of my life, wasted. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? You know, it's like, but it's kind of quirky and fun. It doesn't use a display. It's mechanical, um, you know, and if you want to get into this stuff, people say to me, is that Arduino? It's not Arduino. Um, so I like to use um, uh, electric imp. Uh, let me just go back, see if I can get the electric imp stuff to come on. Um, so electric imp is like this connected SD card shaped thing. Uh, which is really cool, um, and you should absolutely, I think actually I've got a picture of it on here, sorry. Um, by the way, Kimono Labs, you can create APIs out of anything, out of websites, RSS feeds, whatever. Uh, it's a really, really nice service, kimonolabs.com, I think. And, and that's, I, for the Beijing one, I'm actually connecting to the US Embassy's air, official uh, air feed quality in Beijing that they put out there and then use that. It turns, this thing turns it into JSON and uh, if you can work with JSON, you can put it into anything else. So this is an electric imp, super tiny. That's, it's like an SD card shaped thing, but there's actually an M3 computer on there, which is mental. Um, and uh, so it's a lot of time and it connects to Wi-Fi. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And so I use that a lot. Don't travel with this through an airport. You will get stopped. And, uh, and searched. Um, so, yeah, don't do that. Um, but, you know, and battery powers and all that, it's, it's, so it's great. Electricimp.com if you want to get, get into that stuff. So this uses Electricimp. So another little machine I wanted to show you, which everyone seems to love. Um, you know, talking about putting stuff out there, again, using data, um, and but kind of making it resonate a little bit more. Um, so anyway, I'll play this. This is a machine that connects to the internet, connects to the web, uh, using the API that wefeelfine.com um, put out there. It's been, uh, it's been going years. Uh, they have an API that you can use. Um, 
and people have done stuff with it, usually on the web on screen. Uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So what this does, you press a button and it prints out uh, a random happy thought from a random stranger you've never met on the internet. And it prints it out like a receipt, um, as you can see. And, and you, now the, the big thing for me with making this was it didn't print it out on an A4 sheet because that would have been rubbish because that's a fax machine, right? So, but the fact that you can tear it off and you hold it in your hand and when you hold things in your hand, they mean more to you. It's why we love our phones so much and we carry them everywhere, but we also, we have this like intimate relationship with our phones, rightly or wrongly, and uh, we hold them in our hands and when you hold things in your hands, they resonate. So, it's all about the form factor of this thing. Um, and again, you know, putting this out there, no one's paying me to do this. Um, I put this out there and then clients get in touch to make me things like that, uh, to make things like that. Featured in the London Design Festival, all, all sorts of PR from this. It was in New York in the Wired store and says, we can't buy it. It says, we don't care. We love it. It's like, okay. So, you know, things like that. Um, and just putting it out there and talking about it. And these are, you're trying to make a statement. You can write about design, which is really great to do. And, um, you know, it's great to, when, when you write, it makes you think about design, so that's all good. Um, but for me, I kind of hate writing, so I like to put these things in the world to sort of cause a bit of disruption. Um, again, all electric imp um, connecting to, to an API. It's data, but used slightly differently. Um, and a lot of this is down to, you know, pushing buttons. Um, seeing what will happen, not being afraid to actually try this stuff. No one's going to die. Uh, unless you're working like airline safety, people might die then. But generally, uh, no one's going to die. You can try these things, um, you know, and, and it's all part of the process. Um, and when I bought a, a 3D printer back in 2010 and built, built this original version, um, I, I, you know, it kind of blew my mind that I could press a button and a thing would appear in front of me, you know. And everyone is familiar with 3D printing now, and, but I think because the audience is different, and it's now you can, designers who don't know about rapid prototyping, which has been around since the mid-80s, can have this thing. It brings it to a new audience, and we can start to get some new thinking using these technologies. Now, as I said, we, we, we can do this stuff, but in the process of the creative process of failing a lot and trying new things, you make a lot of shit, right? So, you know, and this, this was a year of MakerBot. This is my first year of MakerBot. And um, I, don't need a, I don't need pliers that don't work. I don't need a mini Empire State Building. You know, who needs that shit? You know, no one. So, but it's okay because we're just pushing buttons to see what happens. It's part of the process. Effectively, this was like a landfill making machine. It's like, <laughs> so... Yeah, don't want to do that. Um, so the point really is that everything starts out ugly. Everything, all right? I did say at a conference the other week, even babies, and everyone went, oh, you can't say that. I said, uh, they come out pretty ugly. You know, I don't care what you, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, maybe I did say that, maybe I didn't. So, so stuff like this. Um, so I did a lot of, you know, um, printing rabbits and stuff, and then I thought, well, I want to do something a bit more artistic and, you know, considered um, and use my programming, you know, skills such as they are to do, to do stuff. Um, so I started looking at music and how you could, like, physicalize uh, digital. So this was an early prototype, an early attempt to go, right, start with a sphere uh, and have the music frequencies and the data, the data, because that's all data as well, the music, the data pouring off the music to actually manipulate that sphere. Um, and, you know, and, and it very quickly got very ugly. It's like, what the hell is that? I mean, I wouldn't want that in my house, you know. So it's okay, though, because I was just trying and I was just, this was early stages, you know? So, um, yeah, what is that? I have no idea. Um, so this 
So then I started to think, well, what if you did the whole track and it, you know, you, you could see how it works its way around a shape. Um, but a Sheffield magic for you. So you can see, Human League, Sound of the Crowd, one of the greatest records ever made, no argument. Um, pushing its way, you know, manipulating this shape, pushing its way like a vinyl record almost, working its way around, manipulating the shape, the data manipulating the shape. Uh, and then eventually, uh, you get, you can print it out and you go, there's the physical representation of the Human League, Sound of the Crowd. And you could, if you wanted, you know, it's a prototype, but uh, you put that in your house and people come in and go, what's that? And I go, well, actually, it's the Human League. And they go, I didn't know that you like the Human League because I can't see your bloody music. It's all on a hard drive. So I didn't know you like the Human League. So yeah, I, oh, did you see them? And so it starts a conversation. This is a good thing, right, for the world, right? I'm changing the world here. No. <laughs> Touching lives. Um, so, you know, and this is, you know, I don't know if there's something in this, maybe there's not. And people share, you know, there's different ways we share now. It doesn't have to be in your house. It's all obviously online, and that's cool as well. But this is, could be in the mix, maybe. Um, you know, and you can work on the, the aesthetic. This is one particular approach. But you could apply the same data and apply a different aesthetic to it. That's the point. It doesn't have to look anything like this. But the data is the same. Um, so then I started, you know, thinking about holding data in your hands, the idea of that. Like I said, what if you could trip over data? What if you could bump into data? Um, I like that idea. Uh, and I guess we do that already on our phones and tablets and PCs and stuff. Um, but uh, we could do that in a physical way. Um, so I did this, which is pretty stupid. Um, uh, what you're looking at there is my Twitter data from 2012. So eight, it, the spikes represent um, how, you know, how much I talked on Twitter. Uh, and then you can compare it to 2010, 2008, 2012. So when I first joined Twitter, I was like, I don't really understand this thing. It's like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I was hardly on it. And then you know, by the end of it, talking a lot of crap. Uh, you know, so over several years. Um, and the, so, you know, these cubes are a physical manifestation of, of Twitter activity for me. Uh, and again, they could be in your house or, or whatever, uh, you know, making these like kind of objet d'art things. Uh, and it, well, they could look like anything. So then I thought, well, hang on a minute. Data waffles, <laughs> TM, right? <laughs> no, uh, data waffles. I thought, you know, we're, we're, we're cool. And then you got, so that's the thing, that's 2008. 2012 data waffle, it's like, it's crazy, you know? So anyway, so, and the point with, from a, the programmers in the audience, you know, this is, these are like subtle tweaks. This is, date, this is the same software, essentially, from the Human League thing, um, tweaked to do this. You know, it's like 10 minute change, and then you get this aesthetic. So that's why I kept code is kind of beautiful. Um, I've got one minute 30 left, so if there's any questions, we're going to have to be quick. I'd love it if you've got questions. love American audiences, because they always ask questions, so don't let me down. It's okay if you don't, but anyway. But in England, they all just sit there and go, what? So, <laughs> please, you know, that's why I love, I love doing talks in, in America. So, um, but I want to leave you with this. One thought, um, data by itself is not enough. Data needs poetry. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions, then please shout out. And we've got a microphone somewhere, I think. Yeah. My main man there. Uh, people are going, what was that? Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a question. So I can't really see you, by the way. So if anyone's got any hands up. What? 35? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Brendan. So this is, every, anytime I see work like this, and particularly yours, which I've been following for a while, um, <laughs> 
it always gets me excited about the possibilities, but I'm not a programmer and I don't really know where to start, so it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could sort of give us an idea of you know some good good entry points into yeah. this kind of program. Sure. Well, the, yeah, that is always something. You know, I, I do talks at universities, and the same thing is like, how do we get started and stuff? Um, there's a great. So I mentioned processing before. There's actually an amazing intro to programming, presuming no knowledge whatsoever. It's hello.processing.org. And it's by Daniel Schiffman, who is uh, at NYU here. Uh, and it's so fantastic. But he actually is so cleverly done. You actually work along with him in the video. And it's all in the browser. You don't even download software. And by the end of an hour, it's just an hour's long course, you can, you can start, you've started to do some programming. The thing with all this stuff is you start off very slowly, tiny, line, you know, tiny little bits. So as I was saying before, I would work out how to do that sunflower thing, and that's all that did. Uh, it just laid out blobs. But then you add that to something else, and it's the combination of small, simple, stupid things that make something bigger. Because it, it can be overwhelming when you see stuff, and you go, I have no idea. I mean, I see stuff, and they're like, I might as well just give up, you know, and see this amazing work. But uh, yeah, start out small. Um, you know, and programming, I mean, a lot of programmers kind of hate me because I kind of, I just say it's about making decisions, looaping things, and, and that's well, pretty much it. So, you know, well, you know, programmers go, it's more than that, you know, of course it is, but I'm trying to, like, get more people code. <laughs> and, if, and if it's not for you, work, you know, work with someone or so whatever, you know, you can do that, but it will open up more possibilities if you can, can get into it, you know, so yeah. That's a good start, I would say. Oh, another question. Thank you for your fascinating presentation. Thank you. Is your objective to bring art to the geeks or to um, give artists a sense of numeracy? Um, I think the first one. Okay. I don't know if I'm bringing art to geeks because I, I, you know, I think a lot of that stuff is artistic to me. You know, games. There's games in MoMA. Um, you know, to me, that a lot of those things are art. Um, so, yeah, I think, for me, it's one of the reasons, you know, why, why, why do we live? We, we don't live to just work and, you know, and do something so accountants can put it in spreadsheets. We, we do that to actually, you know, take in art in all its forms, I think, and appreciate art. And I don't mean just going to a museum. You know, there's art in supermarkets, you know, and... I find that equally fascinating. So, yeah, I'm, and I'm trying to say, you know, the other big takeout, hopefully, is that these things don't work on logic. You know, machines understand logic, but a lot of being, being human and, and creating things that communicate to humans and resonate is about using things that are often completely illogical. Love does not make any sense whatsoever at all. Right? And to, you know, machines, it would make machines' brains implode. You know, my wife, who I've been with for 23 years, she hates the films I watch, she hates the music I listen to. You know, if I was to fill that in on, on bloody, you know, one of these match.com things, we would never be compatible. I know they're more sophisticated than that. But, you know, it's, so these things are illogical, and I'm interested in the illogical nature of human beings in relation to interaction design and machines. Because I think. Well, last time I looked, we're humans, not machines, and we should be making these things more, you know, work for us in a more human way. So that's what I'm trying to do, I think, a little bit. Anyone else? Are we done? Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>